Hi guys, it's Mark here. Some of you wanted to know how to uh, do speech on a Texas Instruments TI-99 4A home computer with the TI speech synthesizer, so I thought I'd um, put together what I've managed to uh, work out. Um, here we have a WAV file which is sampled at 8 kilohertz mono. Uh, we're going to take this WAV file and, uh, and convert it into linear predictive coding. Um, which is the format that the TI speech synth uses to reproduce uh, the sounds of the human vocal tract. So um, I'll let you hear this WAV file first. It's from the uh, RetroBits website. I just need to change uh, audio channels. Uh, here we go. The machines were announced in December of 1978 and they actually began shipping in 1979. The first time they were ever shown off was at the Winter Consumer Electronics Show, or CES, and that was in early January of 1979. So that's the WAV file, and we're going to produce, uh, uh, convert that using Qbox, Qbox Pro. Here's Qbox Pro. Uh, so what we do is we start a new project and uh, I want mine in C drive TI stuff I want it in source code I want it in speech I want it in CES because it's a speech about CES show uh, so our sample is at 8 kilohertz and we use the 5220 coding table because it's the closest specification to the TI chip. What we do now is we add the WAV file like that and we simply process it uh, using this medium bit rate and we select, uh, we, we simply accept all the defaults and uh, it'll start to analyze the file uh, if I get it right. I think you have to have it selected first. There we go. Uh, so, it's um, well. Uh, it, this 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 program is very old. It was written for Win 3.0, I believe. It's a 16-bit application. It's pretty cool that it runs still in XP. And it was written by the original designers of the TI speech synthesizer chip, which was originally designed, uh, I think, in 1976, 1977. And uh, after the the engineers that designed the chip left Texas Instruments, they produced their own company called uh, Quadravox which is still going www.quadravox.com and this is one of the products that they had and they uh, have re released this uh, for people to sort of uh, play and have fun with um, the guy that rediscovered it is a guy called Ben Yates he's a Texas Instruments enthusiast like myself uh, and uh, I believe Ben's from the United States he is the guy responsible for this software being back in the public eye as it were uh, so there you go. It's uh, it, it's it's processed it. What we do now is we go to the edit menu and we add a concatenation and a new window opens, and uh, we insert a concatenation. What this concatenation thing is all about is you can uh, you can have uh, more than one WAV file here, and then you can uh, you you add concatenations here, uh, and or, or or add one concatenation. Let's say and then you insert a phrase into the concatenation and the phrase we're going to insert is the WAV file um, so what you can as you can see what you can keep doing is you can keep adding phrases um, so you can use small WAV files to build up to build up long phrases that's the idea behind it um, so we've added the, the WAV file to the concatenation we now simply format it using the linear predictive coding 10v comma 4uv. Don't know what that stuff means, but that's what we do. The 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 rather brief notes we've got from the original authors of this software I recommend that's what we do. So that's what we do. And you can see it's come back with uh, it's written some data files for us. I should point out that the WAV file is 276k, I think it is, in size at 8 kilohertz and the linear predictive coding equivalent of that is 4.7k uh, I'm no mathematician but that's a pretty good uh, compression ratio I don't know, 98% something like that
pretty impressive stuff for a chip that's uh, been designed in the mid 70s so we can come out of this prod uh, this uh, program now we're done save changes yep we don't need that now and what we do now is we will go to where we save the project and it's written these files for us uh, it's put the data uh, in one of these files it's this one here this is the this represents the raw byte stream, the linear predictive coded coded equivalent of the WAV file. Uh, so it, it's written an assembly source uh, file, if you like. Um, the idea is that you take these this data here and you insert it into your own program and you you stream these bytes straight into the uh, chip and uh, you get speech at the other end. It's rather clever. So what I've done in, in best uh, Blue Peter style, I've prepared one and uh, here's the program already. So here's all our data and I've just got a, I've got a machine code program at the top here which uh, displays what we're saying on the screen and, uh, and then this loop here uh, is responsible for reading through the through the bytes and sending them to the uh, the speech chip. Um, it uses a R four there and so it's that loop there, isn't it? I put the wrong loop. It's that one there that uh, reads the data and sends it to nine four zero zero, which is the address of the speech synth uh, port, uh, and causes it to talk. It's all rather clever stuff. So we'll come out of there and go into the assembler and I've set up this project already to assemble straight to a TI disk this is Win 99 4A as part of the Win 99 4A suite which is freeware it's a uh, TI 99 4A emulator written by Corey Burr and available from www.99er.net so we assemble that and we've got no errors, no warnings, you'll see it's produced some files for us but it's 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 assembled the source code into object code and imported it onto that disk there so now we'll uh, load up the TI emulator or simulator as Corey likes to call it and uh, using the editor assembler cartridge uh, which all TI owners will know and love very much make sure we've got the right disk in the drive which we have we now go into the TI editor assembler and we load our object code and now we'll run the program and the TI will speak and I'll just have to change audio channels so that you can hear this the machines were announced in December of 1978 and they actually began shipping in 1979. The first time they were ever shown off was at the Winter Consumer Electronics Show, or CES, and that was in early January of 1979. So there you go, speech on the TI-99-4A. This has all been done on an emulated environment, but uh, the speech will actually be better on a real 994A. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any questions, drop me a line. Thanks.